Thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles. This is the Foundation for Inner Peace Edition, third edition, the Blue Book, the infamous Blue Book. We are in Chapter 7, The Gifts of the Kingdom. This is going to be the start. We'll read half of Section 6, From Vigilance to Peace. This is on page 123, and we'll go ahead and read through paragraph 1 through 7. From Vigilance to Peace. If you'd like to close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Father, please enable me to set aside everything I think I know about everything, God. Please allow me an open mind and a new experience with all things especially this reading today, God, and my brothers in this world, guilt, fear, love, you, everything, God, please allow me an open mind and a new experience, a new vision, and so it is. Section 7, From Vigilance to Peace. Although you can love the sonship only as one, you can perceive it as fragmented. It is impossible, however, to see something in part of it that you will not attribute to all of it. That is why attack is never discreet and why it must be relinquished entirely. If it is not relinquished entirely, it is not relinquished at all. Fear and love make or create depending on whether the ego or the Holy Spirit begets or inspires them. But they will return to the mind of the thinker and they will affect his total perception. That includes his concept of God, of his creations, and of his own. He will not appreciate any of them if he regards them fearfully. He will appreciate all of them if he regards them with love. The mind that accepts attack cannot love. That is because it believes it can destroy love and therefore does not understand what love is. If it does not understand what love is, it cannot perceive itself as loving. This loses the awareness of being, induces feelings of unreality, and results in utter confusion. Your thinking has done this because of its power, but your thinking can also save you from this because its power is not of your making. Your ability to direct your thinking as you choose is part of its power. If you do not believe you can do this, you have denied the power of your thought and thus rendered it powerless in your belief. The ingeniousness of the ego to preserve itself is enormous, but it stems from the very power of the mind the ego denies. This means that the ego attacks what is preserving it, which must result in extreme anxiety. That is why the ego never recognizes what it is doing. It is perfectly logical, but clearly insane. The ego draws upon the one source that is totally inimical to its existence for, for its existence. Fearful of perceiving the power of this source, it is forced to depreciate it. This threatens its own existence, a state which it finds intolerable. Remaining logical but still insane, the ego resolves this completely insane dilemma in a completely insane way. It does not perceive its existence as threatened by projecting the threat onto you. Let me repeat that. Because, okay. It does not perceive its existence as threatened by by projecting the threat onto you and perceiving your being as non-existent. This ensures its continuance if you side with it, 
by guaranteeing that you will not know your own safety. The ego cannot afford to know anything. Knowledge is total and the ego does not believe in totality. This unbelief as its origin, and while the ego does not love you, it is faithful to its own antecedents, begetting as it was begotten. Mind always reproduces as it was produced. Produced by fear, the ego reproduces fear. This is its allegiance, and this allegiance makes it treacherous to love, because you are love. Love is your power which the ego must deny. It must also deny everything this power gives you because it gives you everything. No one who has everything wants the ego. Its own maker then does not want it. Rejection is therefore the only decision the ego could possibly encounter if the mind that made it knew itself. And if it recognized any part of the sonship, it would know itself. The ego therefore opposes all appreciation, all recognition, all sane perception, and all knowledge. It perceives their threat as total because it senses that all commitments the mind makes are total. Forced, therefore, to detach itself from you, it is willing to attach itself to anything else. But there is nothing else. The mind can, however, make up illusions. And if it does so, it will believe in them, because that is how it made them. The Holy Spirit undoes illusions without attacking them, because he cannot perceive them at all. They therefore do not exist for him. He resolves the apparent conflict they engender by perceiving conflict as meaningless. I'm going to repeat that. He resolves the apparent conflict they engender by perceiving conflict as meaningless. I have said before that the Holy Spirit perceives the conflict exactly as it is, and that is meaningless. The Holy Spirit does not want you to understand conflict. He wants you to realize that because conflict is meaningless, it is not appreciation, and appreciation brings love. Nothing else can be understood because nothing else is real, and therefore nothing else has meaning. If you will keep in mind what the Holy Spirit offers you, you cannot be vigilant for anything but God and his kingdom. The only reason you may find this hard to accept is because you may still think there is something else. Belief does not require vigilance unless it is conflicted. If it is, there are conflicting components within it that have led to a state of war, and vigilance has therefore become essential. Vigilance has no place in peace. It is necessary against beliefs that are not true and would never have been called upon by the Holy Spirit if you had not believed the untrue. When you believe something, you have made it true for you. When you believe what God does not know, your thought seems to contradict his. And this makes it appear as if you are attacking him. And we're going to go ahead and pause there. This is page 125, chapter 7, The Gifts of the Kingdom, section 6, From Vigilance to Peace. Go ahead and move into our meditation. And this is on lesson 68. Love holds no grievances. When I let all my grievances go, I will know I am perfectly safe.
Love holds no grievances. When I let my grievances go, I will know I am perfectly safe. Love holds no grievances. Let me not betray myself. Love holds no grievances. I would wake to myself by laying all my grievances aside and waking in him. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for joining with me today.